morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Andrews Online this morning. As we begin Advent, you may notice I'm wearing purple today uh, as we start off on our progress towards Christmas. It's coming very soon. Special welcome this morning to our visiting preacher. You can see a very young man there, uh, Mark Long, this morning. Um, also, we have as our lay minister, Sue, uh, responding on your behalf would be Trevor, and Anna and Rene will be uh, reading for us, and David Sykes in the background, making sure everything happens. Do trust that as we gather, as we worship this morning, you would sense God's presence with you. Uh, and we will be joining Daphne in her home to light the candle in a moment. And so we say, the Lord be with you. And also with you. We come this morning to the circle of Advent, and the wreath reminds us of God's endless mercy, of the hope of newness and of renewal that we have in God. The candles that we see symbolize the light of God coming into the world through the birth of God's son, Jesus Christ. And as we light these candles in our wreath, we remember the preparations which God our Father made for the coming of Jesus into the world. And so as we light the candle of hope on this first Sunday in Advent, we remember all God's people. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise God, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, creator, redeemer, and spirit of truth. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. Let us joyfully proclaim together glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Like as the heart longs for flowing streams, so longs my soul for you, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh, send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. May we come to your altar, O God, the God of our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your being and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In a moment of silence, let us call to mind and then confess our sins firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. We confess together. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, your son to us in humility, your son came to us in humility as our saviour, and at the last day he will come again in glory as our judge. Give us grace to turn away from darkness to the light of Christ, that we will be ready to welcome him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah 33, starting at the 14th verse. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I, I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 25, verse 1 to 10. I will start, and if you can respond with the alternate verses. To you, O God, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O God, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O God, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O God. Gracious and upright are you, therefore you teach sinners your way. You guide the humble in doing right and teach your way to the lowly. All your paths are love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. For your name's sake, O God, forgive my sin, for it is great. Let us pray. Free us, Free God, us of mercy. God of mercy. Free us, God of mercy, from, from all, all that keeps us from you. Relieve the misery of the poor and destitute and fulfill us all with the hope of peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to Luke 21 verses 25 to 36. Glory to Christ our Savior. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, 
this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that they catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Well, a very good morning to you all from myself. It's wonderful to be with you again. I uh, spent some time with the community at St. Saviour's in Claremont last week and um, also have just returned from two days of Synod, which we did in a kind of um, hybrid fashion. Uh, each archdeaconry met in person. We were all linked into Bishop's Court, uh, a really good time. As you can see, I've also um, been a little shorn uh, and maybe uh, part of entering into a new liturgical year uh, and I must admit to my ears feeling a little cold uh, in the wind at the moment. But in case those of you who may not have seen me for a while, it's still Mark here. Welcome to Advent Sunday. Uh, always a multifaceted celebration here at St. Andrews. Today we welcome in, of course, the liturgical new year, which will be felt most perhaps in a shift from a focus on Mark's gospel over this last year uh, to that of Luke in the year ahead. We begin our four-week journey of expectation and hope towards the coming of Christ, which we will celebrate at Christmas. And we also celebrate our patron saint, St. Andrew, today. St. Andrew's Day is, in fact, on Tuesday, uh, with a seemingly more mundane focus on our financial commitments to the life of the parish uh, in the coming year. We meet, of course, uh, in the midst of all of that, but we meet in a particular context today. Uh, for me, most clearly marked this last week by the advent, uh, not of Christ, but of a new COVID-19 variant that again has our world running scared while our scientists race to discern um, its potential impact on our health, while governments around the world secure their borders once more. And uh, we also, uh, I think, await with a little amount of trepidation possible additional curbs uh, to our own freedoms in South Africa, uh, where that our president moved forward the Coronavirus Command Council meeting from this morning uh, to yesterday. And so we can perhaps expect a family meeting um, shortly. But it did strike me that our growing complacency over the last few months towards this virus uh, along with, of course, our hopes for a return to a greater freedom of association and what I think we still mostly define in our minds as, as normal uh, is, of course, suddenly under threat once again. I recognized in my own personal response to this um, a heightened emotional and physical reactivity, uh, and I found myself feeling I just can't anymore. I just can't. Yet an awareness on the edge of that response, which says, in God I can and I will. And I realized yesterday how deeply thankful I am in times like this for the gift of faith, uh, the gift of a sustaining relationship with God. And along with that, a uh, great sense of thankfulness for all who've nurtured this gift uh, within me over the years. And so this morning, as we acknowledge a difficult context that um, will, of course, hold varied responses for us all, we need, I think, to be asking an important question. And the question is, and I've asked this question before, where is God in all of this? Um, and having asked that question before, uh, I've also had to just say, because some people thought I, I, I thought perhaps that God was missing in action, um, that asking this question is, is not in fact suggesting that we've lost God in all of this, um, but it is rather a question of awareness, a question designed to awaken us or wake us up to what God is asking of us in this moment. Now, I'm sure you remember something of the story of Elijah 
um, having faced down the prophets of Baal, uh, Elijah just runs. He's absolutely exhausted. And we find him in the desert. Elijah's exhaustion, um, we realize in the story that God was, was not absent to Elijah, though I think Elijah kind of felt that God had left him. Um, but in, in Elijah's exhaustion, um, God was not, in fact, once he reaches the mountain, God was not in the fire and the thunder and the lightning. Uh, God was not in all the noise. But God was in that very, very still silence. And uh, as we remember that story, it took Elijah some time to awaken to this awareness. Um, interestingly, not even being cared for by angels in the desert and being given food in that space, uh, does he really recognize um, that God is, is with him. But it takes that moment, uh, in that moment of stillness, for him to truly awaken to that. And so you and I have today scripture readings that um, may prove helpful in, in, in answering this question. Uh, or there may be other perhaps more mundane aspects of our lives, our relationships, um, which God needs us to explore as we ask, where is God in all of this? Now in the Jeremiah reading this morning, uh, we're reminded that God has made promises that contain, that contain hope. Uh, that the Advent journey is about uh, embracing these promises and celebrating their outcome. And uh, specifically uh, for us on this Advent journey, that in Jesus, there is justice, there is righteousness. In Jesus, there is salvation. In Jesus, there is safety. We are reminded by Jeremiah that these outcomes exist and they are a reality. And that we as people of God are called to look them out. We call to then hold them up, and we're called to implement them in our lives and in our communities. Now, like Elijah, you and I may find this a tough ask, but again, being reminded by Je Elijah's story, we will be sustained and fed by angels in the desert of our own experience, and uh, we will hear the voice of God again in the occasional silences of our lives. And those, that voice will be calling us back into the fray, back into the fullness of life. For me, the noise uh, is not necessarily always external. The noise for me can often just be the, the rush of thoughts and everything else that goes on in my head. Um, and for you, whatever it may be, let us, let us search out during this Advent call um, moments of silence, moments, moments of stillness, where, where God has an opportunity uh, to speak, where, where we give God an opportunity for us to actually hear what God is saying, that it's not overcome by our tumultuous thinking or the, 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 the breath of busyness that, that our lives hold at this time of year. In today's gospel reading, um, we are reminded that the events that seemingly overwhelm us, uh, perhaps even terrify us, these are just signs. They're not to be feared. They point to something far greater. They, point, they point to the imminence of God in our world. Jesus, or we find Jesus in the gospel reading this morning, reminding his disciples that as daunting as the signs of the times can be, we have the ability to interpret them, the ability to awaken to what it is that God is doing. We have the strength and the resilience to be party to the implementation of God's reign in our lives and in our world, and in fact, in the, the enormity of creation itself. And what I find so helpful about today's reading is that Jesus uses the simplest of examples. He says, when we see a tree budding new leaves, what do we know? We all know that some is coming. And the coming of God into our world is no more difficult to see and the signs no more difficult to interpret than this. However, we do need to be awake. And I suspect that that is often our obstacle. It's certainly often my obstacle. So to ask the question, where is God in all of this, is our wake-up call. The Luke's, um, it's our wake-up call. And, and Luke's gospel 
will affirm over and over again in these next few weeks of our Advent journey that we, in fact, have the resources within, within our relationship with God, within ourselves, uh, to respond. Now, there are three words, um, and these three words were highlighted for me during um, a Bible study interaction at our diocesan synod this last week. And they are hope, authenticity, and generosity. For me, these words speak of what it is uh, to be church, to be God's people, and to be that in our time. Uh, they are a call to countercultural living. And in fact, in a number of my sermons over the last while, I've reflected a bit on the fact that God calls us to be countercultural. These words are definitive of what it is to be a person of faith, what it is to be a community of faith. They are words that are easily applied to the life and ministry of Jesus. And in fact, people in the Gospels are drawn to Jesus, I believe, precisely because they saw these principles of relationship alive in him. And I certainly know that I'm drawn to Jesus because these, these, are, because these principles visible in his life and ministry, they inspire me. Um, they also stretch me. Um, and they keep me coming back for more. They keep me wanting more of Jesus, more of God uh, in my life. They keep me connected. They keep me inspired. Um, and they keep me serving. And so I offer them to you. Hope, authenticity generosity. Now, of course, expectation and hope are, in fact, key aspects of the Advent journey that we embark on again today. However, I think that expectation and hope, and, and hope especially, uh, only comes alive when they are lived with authenticity and with generosity. Uh, and these are practiced, in fact, in the mundane aspects of daily life and commitment. Uh, I don't know if you're anything like me, but, you know, I enjoy those big moments of life, uh, those inspiring moments of life. Um, and, and I do discover God in some of that. But I know that God just calls me to the, the everyday aspect of life, the, the mundaneness of life. And, and that's the space um, where I certainly learn to live these things out. And, and that's the space where increasingly I'm aware God calls all of us uh, to live out our faith. Now, some of you may be guessing where I'm going with this, and, and you may be right, um, because today we also celebrate being uh, St. Andrews, and we celebrate St. Andrews today. Uh, in fact, uh, the 12th, um, not the 12th, the 30th, sorry, don't know where those numbers came from. Um, the 30th, which is Tuesday, is uh, in fact St. Andrew's Day. And so, but today we remember just being uh, St. Andrew's as a community. Uh, and it's in fact the 126th anniversary of our becoming a parish in our own right. And so part of what I'm wanting to ask is, how are we uh, as St. Andrew's, as a Christian community in this part of Cape Town on South Africa, how are we demonstrating our hope, our authenticity, our generosity. And again, I'm wanting to suggest that this may take place in just the mundaneness of our life together. And uh, one, play, one starting place may be in taking a few minutes to fill in the online financial commitment form uh, for 2022, uh, which in all honesty really does seem rather mundane. But as I say, it is that starting point. It speaks to our authentic desire to see this church thrive um, and, and to do so despite the challenges of the times. And our generosity in doing so is, is helping parish council to base a budget on specific financial commitments for the year ahead. Um, and by doing that, puts in, um, it, it puts in place a foundation from which we can be about the work of God in our community and beyond. Um, and to go about it with hope, uh, with, a, with a deep confidence, uh, and to do so authentically, and to be generous in ways far beyond just money. And so I'm not wanting in any way to say we're not hopeful, we're not authentic, we're not generous, um, because I think our history in Newlands is testimony uh, that we are all of this and more. However, uh, we're in unprecedented times. 
And our stability as a community is ensuring we do the small things well in order that we can do the big things with confidence. We've seen some big dips in our giving over the past two years. And uh, I, of course, appreciate that COVID-19 has made life for many of us a whole lot more difficult. Uh, but I remain deeply thankful for the generosity and the faithfulness uh, of so many here at St. Andrews that has enabled ministry to continue and to continue confidently despite a pandemic that has so ravaged our national economy and left so many people's lives devastated in its wake. And part of that generosity is that we've been able to reach out and make a difference in other people's lives. And so holding all that I've said this morning, I, I really do wish us all a blessed Advent journey here at St. Andrews as we embrace again the Christian hope of the coming of Christ. In closing my sermon, I, I would like to leave with you a quote by Bernard of Clairvaux, uh, he died close on a millennia ago. Uh, Bernard summar summarized the theology of the Advent season as the three comings of Christ, past, present, and future. And he says the following. In the first, Christ was our redemption. In the last, he will appear as our life. In this middle coming, he is our rest and our consolation. And so my sincere prayer for all of us at this time and on this particular Advent journey is that we may find rest and consolation in the weeks that lie ahead. And so I would like to close with a prayer of blessing. A prayer of blessing for our financial commitments, which we've done a little differently this year. Uh, there was always something quite profound about bringing an envelope up and putting it before the altar. Um, but we've had an opportunity to do that differently, to click on a button and to, uh, to make that commitment online. And just a reminder that that, of course, remains confidential. And so a prayer, a blessing on our commitments and also the St. Andrews, um, St. Andrews Day Collect. Uh, Patrick Otuma, sadly, uh, has been left out today. So let us pray. Dear Lord. We thank you for your continual blessing on our finances in this parish. We thank you for the generosity of our people and your ongoing provision for us in these difficult and trying economic times. May you bless the commitments that we have made and are making towards the financial health of St. Andrews in 2022 to enable ministry and mission to ourselves and to the world. Amen. Then our collect, our collect for St. Andrew. Lord God, by your grace, the Apostle St. Andrew obeyed the call of your son, Jesus Christ, and followed him without delay. Grant that we may offer ourselves to you in joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so now, together, we affirm our faith believe and trust in God, the source of all being, who made the world. I believe and, and trust, trust in God's Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in God's Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now for the prayers. Let us pray. Lord God, as we come before you are a God of compassion and love, and that you know the longings in our aching hearts. Thank you for the promises in your word. And today it feels more important than ever that this world should know you as a strong anchor in these turbulent seas. As the whole world continues to reel from the effects of this virus, and as the news of this new variant has hit us like a tsunami, our need for you grows stronger. 
we thank you for the work of our scientists and we pray for wisdom for our world leaders. We ask that they would be open to hearing truth and to respond with integrity for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, the scripture in Luke today warns us to be on guard so that our hearts are not weighed down with the worries of this life. Help us, Father, to love and encourage one another. Give us strength and resources to be able to support those whose burdens are too heavy for them to carry alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have recently lost loved ones, and particularly for Mark and Dawn with the passing away of a beloved Uncle Laurie. We pray for all who grieve, that you would comfort them as those who have hope in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all students who are writing exams and particularly for those currently writing matric. May they know your peace and presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we conclude our prayers with the words from our psalm today. Show us your ways, O God, and teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth and teach us, for you are the God of our salvation. In you we have trusted all the day long. Amen. We come now to share the peace one with another. It's one of the great advantages of a Zoom service is that I can see your faces. In the, in the church, all I see are masks, and it's difficult to see people smiling at one another. But we come to share, and Christ is our peace. Christ has reconciled us to God in one body through the cross. We meet in his name, we share his peace. And so the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. And as we come to the great thanksgiving to share together, I encourage you to hold up the bread and the wine. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us, it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. For us, it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, almighty God through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your eternal presence. And now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. 
In the same way, he took the cup saying, this is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon us. <clears throat> and upon the offering of your Holy Church, gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit, confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, source of all being and eternal Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break. Is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The risen Christ is present with us in the sacrament, and in a moment's silence we worship and adore him. And together we pray. We come to this table not because we must, but because we may. Not because we are strong, but because we need strength. We come because we love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. We come because he loves us and gave himself for all. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And as we partake of the bread, either on our own or with those gathered with us, we say the body of Christ given for you. And as we share the wine, we say the blood of Christ shed for you. And so we thank God for the wonderful newness of Advent starting a new journey together. Give thanks, for the Lord is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. We say together, Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for our nation and our continent in these uncertain times. God bless Africa, protect our children, guide our leaders, heal our communities, Restore our dignity and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And we offer ourselves in service. God Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. In the power of the Holy Spirit, enable us to live to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, the lights of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path, and the blessing of God Almighty, source of all being, 
eternal Son and Holy Spirit, be with you all, now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, loving and serving the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, just to say thank you so much to you all for joining us this morning in this time of Eucharistic worship. Uh, thanks to Stephen for presiding and leading our time together. Uh, thanks too to Sue and Trevor for the leadership in the worship and the liturgy. And to uh, Anna and Renee for leading us in our scriptures today. And of course, David in the background uh, for keeping Zoom Zooming. So thank you, David, for that. Uh, just before we come to birthdays for the week, uh, just to say um, thank you so much for everyone who uh, put, put in a submission with our worship survey. We had 122 responses, uh, and it was really encouraging to see that 121 of those responses indicated, people indicated they had been vaccinated. And with this new variant coming along, I think that that's going to prove really important. Um, so that gives me a lot more confidence as we gather in person for worship. Um, and of course, as we come this coming Sunday to, uh, coming Saturday, sorry, for our mini market. Uh, do remind you about that, our mini Christmas market, 8 to 12 here at St. Andrews. Thank you to all who've been working with Jim and Debbie and others to ensure that that's happening. Uh, and do encourage you to pop along. It's all outside. And um, so I think that there's a, a greater freedom to gather in that space. Um, just to say, in terms of the worship survey, we, we obviously um, are just looking at uh, the ways forward with that. Uh, we're not going to put any changes in place until mid-January once the schools are back. Uh, and those changes, of course, will also obviously be impacted on by, by whatever this new variant may or may not, um, you know, whatever additional lockdowns or not that that may bring about for us. Um, but thank you for that. Uh, and just to say, there's always things to balance. Um, the majority of people would like a, an in-person service at nine o'clock. Uh, the second largest group would like an in-person service at eight o'clock. And of course, we, cannot, we can't meet at eight and at nine and get everybody in and out and um, seats sanitized and the car park emptied um, without a break in between. So, so that obviously impacts. And there's also a number of people who would really like to remain online. Um, and particularly those of you who may be a little bit more housebound at the moment, that's obviously important. And needing to ask the question with all our, our, our growing international community from Australia, the UK, um, South Korea and other places, how we hold that space. So um, the leadership group, which would be the lay ministers and council, uh, we, we put a proposal there. And as soon as we've made some final decisions, we, we will communicate that. Uh, just to say thank you for those of you who have also interacted with the, um, the dedicated giving online um, list. I think we've had 37 responses on that. So not quite as good as to the worship survey. Uh, but if you have forgotten, please, if I could ask in the next day or so that you link in on it. It's very simple, very easy to do. Um, if you do get lost with it, though, please just contact Bev in the office and uh, she, will, she will help you with that. Uh, so those are those two things. Also, just to report, we've we've come out of a, the hybrid synod. I, I mentioned it in my sermon. Um, it actually worked incredibly well, all things considered. Uh, and uh, just my huge thanks to Rosemary and Quetzione and James, who were our representatives there. Um, Quetzione, uh, in fact, proposed an important motion that was accepted uh, for a political, uh, a public liaison officer for the diocese. Um, and an important space as we grapple with, with sort of issues of governance and, and other things around us in, in the public sphere. Uh, one of which will hit us next Easter as the, uh, um, the, the Cape Town, um, city of Cape Town has allowed the Two Oceans Marathon to in fact the main race to be run on Sunday instead of Saturday, which is gonna cause absolute chaos for, for many communities in this area um, trying to get to worship on Easter day. Uh, so public liaison officer on that level, and then many others, gender-based violence, um, human, human uh, sexuality, etc., uh, various areas we need to work in. Uh, so my thanks to Hertzione, together with one of the reps from St. Matthews, who put that forward. And um, I could see the excitement on the Archbishop's face, in fact, uh, as that was accepted. I think it's something he's been hoping to put in place for a while. 
So thank you to the three of them, and thank you to all of you for our prayers for the Darsonson Synod, uh, and uh, my thanks to the Spirit, which amazingly continues to hold us uh, online in these hybrid and in-person, online in-person hybrid spaces. It's, it's really been good. So having said all of that, uh, just to come to our birthdays for this week, um, today Isabella Gibbons celebrates uh, her birthday, um, and then tomorrow, Monday, is in fact Chris's birthday, and I'm not sure if he's in the service with us or not. I think he may be here. Let me see if the spotlight works. There he is, Chris. Very happy birthday for, for tomorrow. And um, um, Lucinda, this is just your reminder for that breakfast in bed for, for Chris tomorrow. He's <laughs> <laughs> no such luck. <laughs> I thought that might be the case. <laughs> um, and then on the 30th, uh, we, have, we have Daphne celebrates her birthday. Uh, and Daphne kindly um, had put in... Sorry, what have I done there? I've taken the wrong... Sorry, David, I think you and I are working in... in... What have I done? There we go. There's Daphne. Can everyone see her? I hope. Sure. Sorry, we just uh, move the spotlight there, and then we can see Daphne. <laughs> so Daphne, very happy birthday to you for, for Tuesday. And uh, thank you so much for the, for the beautiful uh, Advent wreath once again this year. Do really appreciate that. Thank you, Mark. Great pleasure. Um, and then on the first, uh, Helen, let's remove the spotlight from there. Uh, on, the, uh, on the first of December, Helen Alibone and Bella Gleur celebrate their birthdays. Um, I'm not sure, I, I doubt uh, Bella is with us, but I think Karen may be here. So Karen, just to ask if you wouldn't mind um, passing on our love to, to Bella, that would, be, that would be much appreciated. And I hope she has a, a really good celebration. Um, and then we have on the second, uh, Daniela Brown and Jason Combo. I don't think either of them are on board today. And the fourth is a busy day. Uh, Diana Appleby, David Sykes, um, Joan Mayer, and Trish Dove. And uh, David, of course, is with us this morning um, as our uh, Zoom worker. David, very happy birthday for the fourth. And we do appreciate your giving up your birthday to do the bookstall at our mini market on, on Saturday. So thank you. Thank you for that gift. Um, Trish Dove. Uh, is not with us that I could see on the list. Um, double checking. Um, so I, I love to Trish for Saturday. If I could ask that we keep Trish. Uh, I am here, Mark. Tr are you there? Oh, there you are. Wonderful. What What are you listed under? Patricia. No wonder I couldn't find you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Trish, very happy birthday for Saturday. Thank and um, just to ask that we keep both Trish and Sandy Green in prayer. They're both in for, for hip and knee type operations this coming week. And just pray for God's blessing and, and safety for you both uh, on that journey. So thank, thank you, you for that. Great, I think on that note uh, to say that we, um, I think that's the, the fullness, sorry, the, the notices have been quite full today. My apologies for keeping you busy. Um, those of you who'd like to stay for some small group interaction, please do. Uh, but in the meantime, an opportunity just to turn on your video, turn on your microphone, and for us in this bigger space, just to greet one another. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Hello, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.